Hello everyone, Gilly here. In this video, I'm looking to do something a little bit different. This kind of fits in the broad category of programming, but kind of doesn't. The creator of Advent of Code mentioned this kind of fun game called Exapunks that I started playing, and it's been a blast. It's a little bit of a hacking game where you control these little robots called Exas, and the Exas basically operate kind of as a, com a weird combination of actors, if you're familiar with actor models and programming, and assembly, pretty much. So you code in this little assembly language, which isn't very complicated or very filled out, but is still nonetheless very, very powerful. And you have these little bots solve puzzles for you. So I've already solved this one before, but I wanted to do it a little bit differently today. The way I solved it before was I made it so that this bot would move over here, spawn two more bots, those bots would hop to the left and the right, spawn two more bots, hop to the left and the right, and so on and so forth until they got to the end. So we have to, in this one, destroy this bot with a kill command, pick up its file, and bring it back home. Now that might sound easy, there are some things that make this a little bit tricky though. Uh, we can't actually link to a host. These are called hosts, these different sections. And these are called links, the things that connect them. We can't actually link to a host that doesn't exist. We can't actually kill a bot that doesn't exist. And we can't actually grab a file that doesn't exist. Doing any of these will cause our bot, our exa, to terminate or halt. So the way I want to solve this today is I want to basically use numbers. So if you think of binary numbers like 000, 101, 110, for example, I wanna take each of these numbers and I'm actually gonna interpret them from the right to the left, but it doesn't really matter too much. And I'm basically going to consider them to mean either step left or step right, basically. So if you see a zero, maybe that'll end up meaning step left. So if you start here, that would mean go to 800. And then step right would be go to 801. Step left would be 800 and try this. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a spawner, which is the bot in charge of spawning other bots. And this bot is gonna loop from zero to seven. And, oh, I should have said, this obviously contains spoilers. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I just want to say this game is really fun. It's a good way to hone programming abilities. It's, it's been a kind of a fun game so far. So this is going to loop from 0 to 7, and it's going to spawn a walker. And kind of initialize that to this. We'll say x equals this initialize it to X, and then the walker is basically going to um, decrease the number and decide which way to step. So it's going to see if it's even or odd, and if it's even, it'll step one way, if it's odd, it'll step the other, and then it will divide the number by two to chop off a bit. Basically, if you divide by two, it ends up doing like a bit shift. So, and then what it's going to try to do is it's going to try to issue a kill command, which may or may not fail or succeed depending on where this bot is. Um, that's one thing I should have mentioned is the bot looks like it's always here, but that you have to run multiple test cases, which move it around the screen to different places. And then it's going to try to grab the file, and then it's going to try to uh, link back home and drop the file. So that's the pseudocode of what I'm trying to do here, basically. So to start off, we'll have this main bot link to 800. So that just means follow this link to go here. And then what I actually want to do here, there's, I guess there's one thing I should say. I didn't actually talk about terminating conditions here. I'm actually not going to use 0 to 7. I'm going to use something that looks more like this because then I can check to see if this value is one, indicating all of the walking has been finished. Um, you can't issue a kill command prematurely. I mean, I guess I could just make this go forever, but I think it has to terminate. So I'm actually gonna use things that look like this, which mean eight plus zero to seven is the range that I'm looking for here, if that makes sense. I just wanna increase both of the bounds by eight. 
So this should really be 8, and this should be 15. So to start off then, I want to copy 15 into X, or I'm sorry, 8 into X. So that's local memory. You have a local register named X, and you have a local register named T. T kind of ends up serving as a temporary register a lot, at least in the way that I solve these puzzles. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a mark spawn. That's like a label in assembly, so this is a place that we can jump to doesn't count as an instruction. And then what we're going to do is we're going to REPL, which I think means replicate walker, and we'll mark walker. So basically what that means is create another bot and have it start at this instruction here, the one that's marked with walker. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy X to M. M is a global register. It serves as shared memory between both. So what the walker then is going to do is it's going to try to copy m to x. So basically, in other words, from this spawner bot, copy the current value to global memory so that the bot can read it. Um, the next what we're going to do is we're going to add i. So add immediate x1, x, increase x by 1 in the spawner bot. Oh, this should be called spawner, I guess. And if we got to 16, we're done because we're doing the work and then incrementing. So F jump, or sorry, test. So this is the test instruction. Test X equals 16. So we're going to do a jump here, F jump specifically, which means if that test came up false, we're going to jump back to spawner. And this is kind of why the T register ends up being temporary. What testing does is it sets the T register to one or zero, depending on whether or not this succeeded. And then the jump will check register T. So by default, it kind of ends up being temporary because of the way that it's used there in the programming system itself. And then we're going to halt. This is just to make sure the spawner bot doesn't fall through and start executing walker instructions. So cool copy m to x and then what we're going to do is we're going to mark walk so to actually walk we need to test and see if x equals one remember that means we've chopped off all of the bits we've taken all the steps that we care to take uh, if it's true we're going to jump to basically grab file and and i'll just call it grab file for now okay if it's false, we're going to have to do an even odd test. So to do that, we can use our temporary register. So we can say uh, mod i. So that's mod modulus immediate x by 2 into t. And then if it's true, we are going to t jump. It doesn't really matter which we choose. I'm just going to say uh, go left. And here I'll mark go left. Might as well as mark go right as well. Doesn't actually matter. Um, these don't count as cycles or instructions. They're pseudo instructions, I think is the right term for them. But after going left or right, we're going to jump no matter what back to walk. Jump no matter what back to walk. So these blocks look kind of similar. Um, but one other thing we have to do is we have to actually div i, and this is why I use the temporary register there. We're going to div i x by 2 back into x, so take the bit off, do a bit shift. So go left, uh, actually, let's talk about go right first, link to 801. Notice all of the rights are 801, 801. Go left is link to 800. And yeah, I think that's the basic idea of what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and run. You can control click to run to an instruction. Let's run to here. Control click. Oops, that's the wrong control. Did that not work? What did I do wrong there? Control click. Oh, <laughs> that's not an actual instruction. It's just a pseudo instruction. So I have to run to an actual instruction. That makes sense. So you can see our first bot got there. So that's a good sign. This bot's going there. So we are kind of going on a right bias. Um, but if we keep walking, 
yeah, that's looking great. All of them seem to be getting there. So let's go ahead and try to grab the file. So that'll be a kill command. And then what we need to do is we need to grab, and the file number is right here, 276. And then we need to go back home. This is a spoiler. If you haven't gotten later, they teach you about macro instructions where you can do things like repeat. So I'm going to use a macro here to go back. One, two, three, four. Rep end. Link negative one. Or you know what? I think I can do this in fewer instructions. Let me, let me not do that. Let me actually make it so instead of halting, what this does is it copies, copy M to X. <laughs> so I'm gonna make the bot communicate back to the parent. Um, and actually, I can do it even better. I can say make, which means create a new file that I own. Oh no, no, never mind. This won't work. Uh, we have to make the bot return the original, the, the file that's being held back. We can't just copy it. So we are going to do a rep here. Sorry about that. So repeat four times and link back one and then drop. And once that bot falls off the end, it will also be terminated. So let's just see a playthrough. Um, I'm just going to do a quick click through. It's a little boring, but it kind of shows what the algorithm's actually doing, which is cool. We saw the bot kill the other bot, found it, and then it came back to the host. Nice. That worked. Um, look at all this waste on the end, though. Hmm. Well, anyways, that uh, came out pretty okay. Let's see how I compared with kind of the averages probably not very good this seems a little slow perhaps yeah so cycles is very high size is at the <laughs> higher end of the average curve and activity is at the higher end of the average curve so obviously this is not the most optimal solution but that's okay i was uh, looking to try something new and i think it was kind of fun to solve it this way